Memory, How to Develop, Train, and Use It Book by William Walker Atkinson Narrated by Andrew Originally published in 1909 This is a great audiobook production created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 13 How to Remember Places There is a great difference in the various degrees of development of the sense of locality in different persons. But these differences may be traced directly to the degree of memory of that particular phase or faculty of the mind, which in turn depends upon the degree of attention, interest, and use which has been bestowed upon the faculty in question. The authorities on phrenology define the faculty of locality as follows. Cognizance of place, recollection of the looks of places, roads, scenery, and the location of objects. Where on a page ideas are to be found, and positioned generally the geographical faculty, the desire to see places and have the ability to find them. Persons in whom this faculty is developed to the highest degree seem to have an almost intuitive idea of direction, place, and position. They never get lost or mixed up regarding direction or place. They remember the places they visit and their relation in space to each other. Their minds are like maps upon which are engraved the various roads, streets, and objects of sight in every direction. When these people think of China, Labrador, Terra del Fuego, Norway, Cape of Good Hope, Thibet, or any other place, they seem to think of it in this direction or that direction, rather than as a vague place situated in a vague direction. Their minds think north, south, east, or west, as the case may be when they consider a given place. Shading down by degrees we find people at the other pole of the faculty who seem to find it impossible to remember any direction or locality, or relation in space. Such people are constantly losing themselves in their own towns and fear to trust themselves in a strange place. They have no sense of direction or place and fail to recognize a street or scene which they have visited recently, not to speak of those which they traveled over in time past. Between these two poles or degrees there is a vast difference, and it is difficult to realize that it is all a matter of use, interest, and attention. That it is, but this may be proven by anyone who will take the trouble and pains to develop the faculty and memory of locality within his mind. Many have done this, and anyone else may do likewise if the proper methods be employed. The secret of the development of the faculty and memory of place and locality is akin to that mentioned in the preceding chapter, in connection with the development of the memory for names. The first thing necessary is to develop an interest in the subject. One should begin to take notice of the direction of the streets or roads over which he travels, the landmarks, the turns of the road, the natural objects along the way. He should study maps until he awakens a new interest in them, just as did the man who used the directory in order to take an interest in names. He should procure a small geography and study direction, distances, location, shape and form of countries, etc., not as a mere mechanical thing but as a live subject of interest. If there were a large sum of money awaiting your coming in certain sections of the globe, you would manifest a decided interest in the direction, locality, and position of those places, and the best way to reach them. Before long, you would be a veritable reference book regarding those special places. Or, if your sweetheart were waiting for you in some such place, you would do likewise. The whole thing lies in the degree of one regarding the matter. Desire awakens interest, interest employs attention and attention brings use, development, and memory. Therefore, you must first want to develop the faculty of locality and want a heart enough. The rest is a mere matter of detail. One of the first things to do after arousing an interest is to carefully note the landmarks and relative positions of the streets or roads over which you travel. So many people travel along a new street or road in an absent-minded manner, taking no notice of the lay of the land as they proceed. This is fatal to place memory. You must take notice of the thoroughfares and the things along the way. Pause at the crossroads or the street corners and note the landmarks and the general directions and relative positions until they are firmly imprinted on your mind. Begin to see how many things you can remember regarding even a little exercise walk. And when you have returned home, go over the trip in your mind and see how much of the direction and how many of the landmarks you are able to remember. Take out your pencil and endeavor to make a map of your route giving the general directions and noting the street names and principal objects of interest. Fix the idea of north in your mind when starting 
and keep your bearings by it during your whole trip, and in your map making. You will be surprised how much interest you will soon develop in this map making. It will get to be quite a game, and you will experience pleasure in your increasing proficiency in it. When you go out for a walk, go in a roundabout way, taking as many turns and twists as possible. In order to exercise your faculty of locality and direction, but always note carefully direction and general course, so that you may reproduce it correctly on your map when you return. If you have a city map, compare it with your own little map, and also retrace your route and imagination on the map. With a city map or road map, you may get lots of amusement by retraveling the route of your little journeys. Always note the names of the various streets over which you travel, as well as those which you cross during your walk. Note them down upon your map, and you will find that you will develop a rapidly improving memory in this direction, because you have awakened interest and bestowed attention. Take a pride in your map making. If you have a companion, endeavor to beat each other at this game, both traveling over the same route together, and then seeing which one can remember the greatest number of details of the journey. Akin to this, and supplementary to it, is the plan of selecting a route to be traveled on your city map, endeavoring to fix in your mind the general directions, names of streets, turns, return journey, etc., before you start. Begin by mapping out a short trip in this way, and then increase it every day. After mapping out a trip, lay aside your map and travel it in person. If you like, take along the map and puzzle out variations from time to time. Get the map habit in every possible variation and form, but do not depend upon the map exclusively. But instead, endeavor to correlate the printed map with the mental map that you are building in your brain. If you are about to take a journey to a strange place, study your maps carefully before you go, and exercise your memory in reproducing them with a pencil. Then as you travel along, compare places with your map, and you will find that you will take an entirely new interest in the trip. It will begin by meaning something to you. If about to visit a strange city, procure a map of it before starting, and begin by noting the cardinal points of the compass. Study the map, the directions of the principal streets and the relative positions of the principal points of interest, buildings, etc. In this way you not only develop your memory of places and render yourself proof against being lost, but you also provide a source of new and great interest in your visit. The above suggestions are capable of the greatest expansion and variation on the part of anyone who practices them. The whole thing depends upon the taking notice and using the attention, and those things in turn depend upon the taking of interest in the subject. If anyone will wake up and take interest in the subject of locality and direction, he may develop himself along the lines of place memory to an almost incredible degree. In a comparatively short time at that, there is no other phase of memory that so quickly responds to use and exercise as this one. We have in mind a lady who was notoriously deficient in the memory of place and was sure to lose herself a few blocks from her stopping place, wherever she might be. She seemed absolutely devoid of the sense of direction or locality and often lost herself in the hotel corridors, notwithstanding the fact that she traveled all over the world with her husband. For years. The trouble undoubtedly arose from the fact that she depended altogether upon her husband as a pilot, the couple being inseparable. Well, the husband died, and the lady lost her pilot. Instead of giving up in despair, she began to rise to the occasion. Having no pilot, she had to pilot herself. And she was forced to wake up and take notice. She was compelled to travel for a couple of years. In order to close up certain business matters of her husband's, for she was a good businesswoman in spite of her lack of development along this one line, and in order to get around safely, she was forced to take an interest in where she was going. Before the two years' travels were over, she was as good a traveler as her husband had ever been, and was frequently called upon as a guide by others in whose company she chanced to be. She explained it by saying, Why? I don't know just how I did it. I just had to, that's all. I just did it. Another example of a woman's, because, you see, what this good lady just did was accomplished by an instinctive following of the plan which we have suggested to you. She just had to use maps and to take notice. That is the whole story. So true are the principles underlying this method of developing the place memory, that one deficient in it, providing he will arouse intense interest and will stick to it may develop the faculty to such an extent that he may almost rival the cat which always came back, or the dog which you couldn't lose. The Indians, 
Arabs, Gypsies, and other people of the plain. Forest, desert, and mountains have this faculty so highly developed that it seems almost like an extra sense. It is all this matter of taking notice, sharpened by continuous need, use, and exercise, to a high degree. The mind will respond to the need if the person like the lady just has to. The laws of attention and association will work wonders when actively called into play by interest or need, followed by exercise and use. There is no magic in the process. Just want it and keep at it. That's all. Do you want it hard enough? Have you the determination to keep at it? For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.